In this video, I'm going to show you how to build an ATM machine so that you can produce as many customers as you could ever dream of. I don't care what the business is. If you're a local business owner, retail shop, dentist, realtor, insurance, home services, landscaper, anything. If you're a local business owner, this is the video for you. I just got done watching every 2024 marketing guide for small businesses that I could find on YouTube and every video sucks. They tell you to post more social content, make more TikToks, like, and then hope that it translates to customers. Hope that you go viral enough somehow. It's a ridiculous strategy. My name is Jake Lorraine. I'm a local small business owner just like you. I own a print shop, printingforsupercheap.com. I had a home improvement business for years and I'm gonna show you how to build that ATM machine because I know there's nothing more frustrated than having a good business, but you can't figure out how to get the customers. You just can't figure out how to take your hard earned money and put it into something that's going to provide a return. You're throwing money everywhere. You're hoping it works. You're making TikToks, you're making videos, and it's, it's not exactly translating into customers. You want something that you can put money in and get more money out of. So that's what I'm going to show you today. This only involves three simple things. Step one, I just want you to imagine you're in an auction house. You're in this big auction, whatever it's called, big barn or something, a big giant barn where they do the auctions, okay? And instead of there being pigs or whatever, there's all your potential customers are in these cages. So if you're a realtor, it's full of all the people in your local area that might be thinking about listing their home. You're a chiropractor and it's people with back pain. And the and the auction guy gets his microphone. He's like, here's a guy with back pain, $10, $10. Guy with back pain, $10, $15, $20. Do I, do I hear $25? Where do you start? Where do you put in a bid? I want, I want this customer. Okay, maybe say $25 and there's other competitors and they're buying them up at $75, $100, $200. And you're like, I can't. I'm not spending $200 on this. This is where most business owners are, local business owners. They have zero clue, 90, like 5% of us have no clue what we could actually pay if they were being auctioned off to us. This is what actually happens in real life. The 5% of your competitors are literally buying almost all of the customers, like 80% of all the prospective business is being bought by a, just a handful of big players, you're picking up all the scraps. For 2024, get a head start and start figuring out what you'll be comfortable spending to get a new customer because marketing and advertising literally is that. You're putting money into things, but you need to be able to quantify it and break it down into this exact amount of what you're okay buying a new customer for. That way, when you put money into marketing, you're a restaurant owner and you put $1,000 into something, you know that you need to get, say, 50 customers back, $20 a piece or whatever. You know that this will return an ROI and you will buy people all day at $20, $25. This is the, probably the most single important metric that you can figure out for your business. The reality is there's a, a group of people in your general radius who will do business with you, who are looking to list their homes, who are looking to have their lawn care done, remodel their house, refinish their basement, build a deck. All these people are there and you're kind of fighting against your competitors over who can kind of buy them, the who's doing the most marketing. That's why these small percentage of competitors are getting the vast majority of them. This is how you have a roofing company that has, spends $50,000 a month in marketing. You have a realty team that spends $30,000 in marketing. They're doing all this stuff because they understand how much they can buy a customer for. It's an ATM machine. Don't worry about how you're going to afford any of this stuff or anything. Don't worry about any of that yet. Just figure out how much you can actually spend to acquire a new customer because you can then put money in smartly where it's going to literally buy customers. When you know how much you can spend to acquire a customer, if you could spend $500 and make $5,000, you will be dumping $500 in like crazy. And you can start by putting $500 in, $1,000 in, and these returns just exponentially grow because you're feeding this machine. It starts by knowing exactly how much you're comfortable spending to acquire a new customer. And like 95% of all small businesses have zero clue. If you don't have any clue what you could go into that auction house and buy people from, you will get slaughtered. And because you're getting slaughtered right now, your competitors are slaughtering you. They are, and they're taking all the business. The big few competitors know, and you just, you're picking up the scrap. If you want to build an ATM machine, you have to break all this down into a math problem. It's just a math 
problem of putting money in and getting money out. You should also be looking at how much you can pay, not just for a new customer, a new customer through the door. You may figure, okay, I'm okay spending $2,000 to get a listing, but you should probably be breaking this down to if every four people contact me for a listing that turns into a listing, then you know you can spend $500 for every person that contacts you. And that's the even smarter way of doing things is to now gear your marketing into getting people just to get into the door. You're not so much worried about them whether they call you up and say, hey, I want you to list my house. You just want them scanning a QR code. You just want them walking through the door. It's always a lot cheaper and a lot easier and faster to get leads. If you're lawn care, you know, you should be figuring out how much can I spend just to get someone to call me for an estimate because you know x amount of those people will turn into deals it's easier to get people to call for an estimate versus call and say i'm ready to buy just think of yourself in that auction house and if you're going to be out of it at three dollars a piece while all your competitors are going to be willing to spend a hundred dollars a piece then you're just going to continue to get absolutely destroyed which takes us to step number two step number two once you've figured out how much you can spend to get a new customer through that door, step two is figuring out how you can spend even more. To all the people that need to find a new church and a new barber shop, and you're fighting against other competitors of who can kind of convince them. So it's your job, if you really want to build an ATM machine, to figure out how you can outspend your competitors. Figure out how you can increase the amount that you can spend per person to bring it in. If you're thinking that you would spend $20 to get a new person to the door, you should be figuring out how you can spend $25, $30. What can you do to increase that amount that you can bring in a new customer for? If you can buy customers at a higher price than your competitors, you are going to gobble them up. You're going to be the one that's slaughtering them. You're going to be slaughtering them. Your competitors are going to be so frustrated. You're going to get them faster. You're going to get better customers. So how do you spend more? You don't necessarily have to spend it in the advertising. You can just give greater incentives. You can say, hey, I'm willing to give something away. I'll give a free pizza away. If it's the people that have never been in this pizzeria, I'll give a free pizza away. Or think of maybe you're going to target new movers, people who've just moved into the area. You can say, well, I'm willing to give them a free pizza. I'll give them a free dry cleaning. So whatever your business is, if you can get brand new people who have never been to your business before and get them in and do whatever it takes to get them in, you're spending more per customer, but you know that it's going to turn into sales. You're going to beat a competitor. You're going to be the first one to sell them furniture. You're going to be the first First one, to sell them driveway ceiling. Giving people greater incentives is spending more money per person. You know, you're willing to give them a free drink, a free appetizer, buy one, get one free. These incentives will draw more people in. It'll draw them in quicker and they won't go to competitors and they'll spend more. If you're working on your systems in your business to get them to spend more, maybe you have upsells, you have desserts you give them, you have other services that they'll likely buy, you have recurring plans, all that stuff in the background will translate to lifetime profit. Because most of these customers, if you give them a good good experience, they come back longer and longer and longer. You should be loss leading because you know they'll spend more in the long run. So you can give stuff away, run contests, very aggressive with your offers, gets people through those doors faster than ever. It raises that cost that you're bringing people in and it just pays off immensely. You can scale this up so big and you can just start feeding that ATM machine. It just keeps spitting out more customers. Think of what you can do that your competitors aren't. If you can do crazy stuff that your competitors aren't and get that in front of the right audiences, you are going to destroy, you're gonna obliterate those competitors. All you need to do is get these strong, aggressive offers in front of the right people your phone is going to ring off the hook. Your people are going to be coming in like never before. There's someone right now wanting exactly what you offer. There might be hundreds. There might be thousands depending on the area. They are there. You just have to get in front of them and out, essentially outbid your competitors. Well, let's take this mountain ice, good client of mine. You get this in front of people with joint pain and back pain, they respond, okay? And if you're sending this, if you're spending the money to get this into their hands, into an uncrowded mailbox, this is why I love postcard marketing so much, they will respond. Posting on TikToks 
and making more social media posts is not going to take your business to the next level. Post all the TikToks you want. And I like TikTok. I think TikTok slayers, but not all, not all of us are as charismatic or have the insane dedication to post TikToks every single day, three times a day, so that you hope people start coming in because they see your TikTok so much or they see how many times you post on Facebook. So many marketing people have never been in a local business owner's shoes. The last thing they want to see is another Facebook ad. The weak offer with no incentive, with a bland, everyday kind of look. You're, nothing differentiates you. You are wasting money. You're dumping it. You might as well just trash it. But if you want to put money into something that works, do postcard marketing. Whether you're a restaurant, a church, you have a, a retail shop, a boutique, a hair salon, stylist, do any kind of home services. There are so many people out there that want your services and you just have to get in front of them. And postcards can target exactly those people. You can target people who own homes, people who make X amount of money. You can do EDDM and just blanket specific neighborhood. You just cover a certain area and you just keep getting your message across to these people. If you can identify where your customers Customers are and you can throw a strong aggressive offer at them freebies strong incentives strong headlines great reason to, to contact you you will have so many customers and you will not be worried about running these stupid Facebook ads and making TikToks all day our last step is actually how to spend less. You may not have a huge budget. Now you figure out how to spend less, and that means cutting out all the crap, trim that stuff down. If it's working, then stay at it. If you've got a billboard up and you have no clue if that's working, take those thousands of dollars and put it into something that's working. You've got to put it into the ATM machine. Trim all this fat, all this crap that you're spending to just get rid of it and start putting it into something that's working. That could be the ads that you're running that are working. Maybe you're just going to pump up the offers, more aggressive offers, or you start putting it in the direct mail, postcard marketing, get it right to your, your target audience. You can send postcards to people who just, who have never been a customer of yours and give them the strongest offers possible just to get them in. I teach you how to share postcards, how you, how you take multiple businesses on one card and make them pay for it. So you can have other businesses that aren't direct competitors or maybe things that people like, like restaurants, get, talk with them, introduce yourself to them as another business owner. It's always great to know other business owners and ask if they want to share a card and then everyone pays a fraction of the price. They may be paying for your entire ad. If you put enough ads on here, you may even be making money. You can even make money on it. You want to be a super pro, you can get my local marketing masterclass. All the secrets and everything are in here. Oh, I love this. Even I love to read this and I wrote it. Maybe you figure out your exact target audience and then Think of who else might want to get that same audience that you don't compete with and now get everyone together and they pay for your whole marketing. You don't pay a dime. Now you've got your target specific audience receiving your aggressive offers. Now you're taking out the advertising cost. Instead of spending that, your competitors are spending thousands of dollars and you've just wiped that out. You're not spending any of that. Instead, you're taking money and putting it into a killer offer. You're giving something completely crazy away for free. You're giving a free pizza. You're giving a totally free dental cleaning. Una, you're, you're, because now you don't have to spend it on advertising. So now you're putting it into the offer and now you've got this crazy offer and your competitors are like, how the heck is this person doing this? How are they able to do this? They're crazy. And you just start growing astronomically fast because you took the money that you would have been spending in advertising or you cut out all the crap and you instead applied that to more aggressive offers. Now you're roping people in and your competitors have no clue. You got them, you got them up at night wondering how they're going to survive because you're you're in the picture now. You will build an ATM machine. But I'll tell you, you're not going to build one if you're not figuring out how much you can spend on customers because you won't even know. You'll do you'll do mailings, you'll do ads, whatever, and you won't know if what you're getting back is worth it. Is it not? You don't know. You can't make it into a math problem until you know those numbers. You have to figure out how much you can spend, how much more you can spend, and then how much less you can spend. That is the key to it. You're going to have a great year. I can't wait. But if you need postcards, marketing the cheapest, fastest, highest quality place you can go to in all 50 states, I am here to help you. I'm a business owner just like you. If you're still on the edge about postcards, some, some people are like, you know, do postcards really work? You know, postcards are just old old timey, isn't that stuff where everything's digital now? Postcard marketing, it is so incredible. The, the mailbox is not crowded. You go on Facebook, 
ads left and right. We don't even notice them anymore. I guarantee you don't even notice them. They're just a nuisance and you just scroll by. It is so hard to advertise on Facebook now. It's so expensive. People are just just jaded. They're, they're getting completely jaded to it of all ages. The mailbox is not crowded. If you send something that's colorful, that's tangible, that's glossy, that's nice to the touch. Okay, I just got this. Instacart, unlimited delivery for a year. They probably get so much freaking business. It's unbelievable. Just do this at the local level. Look beautiful, that's colorful, that's got great offers. It's something local. People will save, they will save this. They will scan the QR codes. They will clip the coupons out. They will put it on a, on a shelf. They will put, they'll put it on their fridge. They'll walk by it 100,000 times a day. Name any other kind of advertising that does this. There isn't. It's like the most perfect medium ever. It's physical. It's tangible. You can scan a code. You can text the number. You can bring you uh, go to a website. You can bring you over to the digital side of your business. So it's a perfect bridge from physical to digital. People can share it. They can share it with their friends, pass it to people, someone they know. It sits on the coffee table. It's got such a shelf life. It's scalable. You can send a thousand. You can send five hundred. You can send. 10,000, 500,000, you can scale it to any degree you want. Guess what? Gen Z, Gen Zs are 25, 26 years old right now. They go from like 11 years old to 25. That generation has never grown up in the uh, old time where you would just, you would take your mail and then throw it out in the garbage. You know, you'd, you'd sift through it. They never grew up with that. A lot of them are just learning what mail is. Gen Z is so oblivious to digital ads. They don't even see them. They don't, they scroll past. They have zero interest. Their, their brains have been so wired to ignore digital ads. You can stick an ad right in front on the screen the whole time. They, they'll never see it. But you put something in a mailbox, they love it. Gen Z, all studies show this. If you talk to any Gen Z person that's in their, in their 20s and they get something in the mail, it's incredibly personal. They love it. They get it. It's really, I mean, think of the sushi place. I love this, this one, for example. This is incredible. They have sushi. They can clip this out. It's physical it's gloss it's got tangibility to it they get their mail and they actually go through it all it's very important to them these things are super important they open everything they look at everything they didn't grow up throwing everything out and getting and having mailboxes stuffed to the hilt with stuff mail is a new concept to them they love it extremely responsive every year there's more and more of those people now they're becoming homeowners they're in their mid-20s now so they're they're buying all the services that Everyone else is selling. They're getting insurance or buying cars or buying furniture. They're getting their own places. They're buying their first homes. They're doing all the things that a, a fully adult generation is doing now. And every year it's going to get more and more and more and more. As these teens that have no clue what mail is come into their 20s over the next few years, mail is just going to be more and more and more of the place you want to be. So I hope this helps. You want to get a camp postcard campaign. You want to do EDBM. You want to do a targeted mail campaign, whatever you got going on, I am here for you. My contact information is below. I own printingforsupercheap.com. My name is Jake Lorraine. You can text me 24-7. Hit me up. I've got a free guide if you want to download that. I also have side hustle stuff. Uh, if you want to learn how to sell some of this stuff or get other business on there and make fifty, a hundred thousand dollars a year doing that. Any age, doesn't matter. Um, I'm here to help. So let's have a great 2024. I'm gonna see you in the next video.